Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar merchandise review. This one is going to be my review for this, which just arrived in today. It is the Diamond Select Toys Gallery Diorama Zuko, from Avatar of course. So this is the third Gallery Diorama. I really like these figures. I've reviewed the previous two statues on my channel. Uh, the first one that they released was the Ang followed up by the Katara, and now we have the third one here, uh, which is Zuko. They have announced that they are working on a couple more, uh, but they haven't said specifically how many and specifically which characters they're going to be doing. I'll give some speculation on what I think they'll do towards the end of the video. But uh, right here, while we're sort of on camera here, this is just to take a quick look at the packaging. I'll get behind the camera to open it up and do an in-depth kind of close-up review. So the most obvious thing that you note straight away if you're familiar with the previous reviews or have seen these in person is they've changed up the sort of packaging style. The colors and stuff like that. The most obvious way to show this is if I bring up the packaging for the Katara here, you'll notice that it's very different than the Zuko here. So you can see very different color schemes. Um, this uh, had the sort of what was pretty consistent across Diamond's Avatar stuff, which is the sort of sand colored stuff with the uh, element symbols in the background, uh, with the red as the kind of um, accent color. Uh, you know, I actually like this color scheme. It was actually quite well done. Um, but it was obviously, you know, more or less, that's what they were doing because they were one of the first places that picked up the Avatar license to do figures and statues. This is much more in line with what most of the current batch of Avatar merchandise is doing. This is more or less the new sort of style guide behind what packaging is like to make all the merchandise sort of flow consistently together. So the navy background here uh, with the sort of, you know, similar sand style kind of accent thing. So they're using that still. Uh, it shows off sort of better on the back here, kind of what they're going for. You have some um, element symbols here. You get a description for Zuko on the back. But, you know, it's just interesting to note that more sort of Avatar Studios uh, design aesthetic for the uh, packaging that they switched it up. I wasn't expecting this because prior to receiving this, I didn't actually... I hadn't seen a picture of it in packaging. So um, yeah, that's really all there is to say here. There's a quick look at it in box, pretty nice. You'll note here the uh, Avatar State Ang image. I'm guessing when we get more Korra merchandise, it'll be similar packaging just with Korra here and then the Korra logo here. So, you know, it, it, they've created a cool thing here where they can use this as just their general design kind of color scheme type stuff. Uh, this figure is designed by Uriel Catan, sculpted by Salvador Gomez, whose names I think we've seen before on these uh, figures. Um, and other than that, there's just a brief description of Zuko's character. Interestingly, they refer to the Fire Nation as the Fire Kingdom on the back. Uh, you'll probably have noticed a few of the more recently announced figures when they've had descriptions of characters have felt a little bit weird, like they've gone through a translator a few too many times or they're just lacking some of the details um, with regards to that. Like some of the character descriptions for like Aang, Zuko, Sokka on some previous action figures felt a bit odd. Similarly, just whoever refers to it as the Fire Kingdom, like, you know, it's the Earth Kingdom, Fire Nation, you know, Air Nation, you have a few things like that, Air Nomads, Air Nation, um, um, but Fire Kingdom never really is one that tends to come up, but it's just one word on a description for a you know, statue. So it doesn't matter too much, but it's just something to, to note that like, why would you do that? Like, I, I assume you guys are Avatar fans who are making this. Like, do you not notice that that was something written on the back? But anyway, so yeah, I'm just gonna get behind the camera here and we'll open this up and do the full review. Okay, so here we are. Let's just get straight into opening this. These are usually pretty simple to open. We've just got a few pieces of tape uh, on the top and that will let us get everything out. And we got this here. Very awkward to do on camera. <clears throat> just because Getting the right height for the box opening, which the box is obviously much bigger than the figure, and then you know it's just awkward. But anyway, usual stuff here. We've got our insert background here. We can pull out the plastic thing. Oops. 
Okay. Okay, so inside here is the plastic, figure in the plastic. And again, just a few pieces of tape. And yeah, there we go. Figure is out. So here's our very first look. Again, I'll, I'll get a better camera angle that's a little bit closer down in just a second, but just literally having pulled it out of the packaging. How do I feel about it? Um, yeah, it looks pretty nice. Very pleased with the quality, especially uh, on these, the thing I immediately always notice is the quality and how good the transparent plastic looks. So for this time, our first time seeing fire, really, really nice uh, the way they've done this. Um, especially to make it feel very unique compared to the water on the Katara and the air on Ang. Um, swords there, all the different details that, you know, we've only had a few pictures of this that you haven't seen every single angle that, you know, they have to sculpt every little bit of this fire to get this uh, effect. Um, so yeah, very happy with how it looks. Uh, not noticing any real issues with regards to like the paint really being off or like feeling like it's low quality in any place. Um, nothing's like detached, nothing's fallen off having just opened it. So, you know, that's all good. Um, yeah, feels pretty solid. So yeah, I'll just adjust the camera angle here and we got, we'll get into the review proper. So here we are, a uh, better camera angle here to take a look at the figure. And like I said before, overall, I'm very impressed with it. Like I've been with all the other uh, gallery diorama figures. And um, they just stand out uh, above all the other, I think, statues that we've had. Because there is so much more kind of detail, the poses are so much more dynamic than so many of the other statues that are coming out. Like, especially now that we've got a chance to see the first uh, McFarlane statue. It seems very boring, very dull figure compared to, say, the Ang that they do in um, in this line, and even this Zuko. Look at this crazy fire effect part showing him in action. Whereas, otherwise, you know, you think your usual kind of uh, statue for Zuko would probably be just him standing up maybe just doing some sort of a basic fire punch, but the pose would be fairly neutral. And um, this is a very, very cool, you know, figure just because of that. And especially for the price point that these figures cost 50, $50. Um, and for what you get, I really do like what we're getting here because to, to me, like we, we've, we've had this mix of usually in Avatar, what we have is either very sort of low-end stuff which is more of sort of you know your, your Funko Pop style thing or action figures and then we've tended to go all the way up to the couple of hundred dollar figure so I really like this middle ground price point where you're paying more than those action figures but less than the super high-end statues and you're getting I think the best of both worlds in in many ways that say that like what was it four or five hundred dollar Mondo Korosami statue you get the impression that uh, Diamond Select could do something like that for a fraction of that price obviously the materials that that's made out of is, is a different story and so on but in terms of just looks I, I think they managed to execute something really nicely on this figure so obviously it's our first time seeing a firebender in this style and that's what they've tended to do with these uh, figures is have the uh, bending effect of the character be the base and be what sort of attaches the figure to the, the statue itself overall. They're in action um, or just demonstrating their bending in some way. And this is another good example. I do think Zuko's pose of the three that we have so far is probably the one that's maybe the most difficult to kind of figure out what exactly he's doing. It looks very dynamic there on the statue, but then when you try and figure out like, how did he get into this position? Did he do some sort of a weird like side jump dodge backwards while firing backwards? It's um, it's an interesting one because his knee is like really kind of uh, outstretched pointy here. So he's going in this direction. 
he's jumping up in this direction but he's firing backwards and has his hand like in a, in this position so there's just a little bit of kind of like hmm not sure exactly um about that but it doesn't to me stand out as being like super bad or anything like that i just think the katara and ang have i suppose poses that maybe fit a little bit better but uh, i really appreciate that they also went for book three zuko um I think so many of the recent lines that have started this year have, I think, suffered a little bit in terms of probably their popularity by the fact that they all feel the need to start off with, we need to do book one, this character, book one, this character, book one, this character, and do all of the early stuff and leave the designs that were more like, we remember the characters more as that, you know, f fully developed, you know, at their bending peak. and. Um, leave those designs until later. Whereas I really like that Diamond Selective just come in here and went like, yeah, we don't want to do a book one Zuko doing a, doing a pose, maybe later on. Book three Zuko is the one you want. Book three Katara is the one you want. Book three Aang is the one you want. So they, they, they made a lot of good decisions here. And um, so I do appreciate that. And like I said earlier on, the transparent uh, plastic that they use here is really, really nice with the kind of yellows going into orange, uh, bits of red. You can see more in the sort of kind of core of it down here. You can see the bottom to get a sense for like the different way the different sort of parts are sort of connected in. So that's kind of cool. Um, if there's any bit that's sort of fragile a little bit, it's definitely the fireball that he's shooting out here. Um, just because the way it's attached on, like you can see there's a little bit of movement just because it's the smallest attachment point on the figure. Um, I don't know if you can quite see that, but the, the way it works is that it's actually Zuko with his two fingers out basically making this fireball. And now, obviously this is more of a punch attack. So the way, the, the reason that they did that is um, because uh, they had to have a way for the fingers to actually attach to the fireball and um, so they did it that way So it means that there's only like two fingers worth of uh, you know Zuko be attached to the fireball now It's stuck in there quite nicely. I don't think it's gonna fall out It's just something from a QC perspective. Maybe if you do actually see it in person just maybe take a look at it and you know <laughs> move the box around a little bit to see if this bits on solidly uh, I doubt it's too much of a QC problem. Uh, it's just on a figure that's overall pretty solid. It's the one bit that kind of has a little bit of a uh, motion to it. But then again, I think the Katara had like a section that, you know, could be like removed and stuff like that on one of her effect parts. And then on the Ang, of course, the glider staff is... Uh, uh, held into his hand with a, a little rubber band so you know there, there are these things like to get this level of detail you have to have some of those kind of uh, uh, things work to make it uh, function properly um, uh, obviously Z Zuko's outfit is actually r rather simple uh, in his book three design compared to the fancy armor that he'd actually have if it was book one Zuko but they do it very nicely here colors the different layers of it all done very very nicely um, all the paint apps you would want on the kind of boots and so on uh, even just the way they have it kind of splayed out here in the sort of action pose and um, it's all really well done uh, similarly you have the kind of sword holster here and um, and then you have it on the back here with the idea being that you know it's both swords linked together because the swords are kind of like parts of a pair now, the sword doesn't come out, of course, it's not an action figure, it is a diorama statue. But, you know, detailing quite nice, the little gold effect, um, gold paint on it is quite nice. Uh, and that seems on quite solidly as well. Um, so, yeah, uh, really nice. Uh, the face, I suppose, is the last thing to cover. Um, I think it looks pretty good, you know. Even the detailing of just his eyes, you, you can tell that, you know, the, there's really, really strong detail to get that across. That his eyes aren't open too much, so it would have been, like, easy for them to, like, not put the detail in there. But they do it very nicely. The face is so important to get right. And Zuko's probably about the best that they've done, Diamond Select, with, any, with the figure on any of the characters. Where it's determined... But it's not super angry or 
ill-fitting for Zuko's character. I think they got it really right here for this figure. So, um, big fan of this Zuko. Also, they got the sculpting on his hair, like, perfect. Um, so, because uh, th that was a problem on the Diamond Select figure, is that they... Uh, they had the fringe in a way come down way too much and it like blocked his eyes but because this is a statue it's it's perfectly sculpted in the right position so that's great to see so uh the final thing i think to cover is just some comparisons to show this off next to the other figures so uh first of all we'll bring in ang so here is a uh, gallery diorama ang the first one of these avatar figures and you can see in terms of the size they're about as uh, similar Obviously, Aang is sort of standing up on his uh, tiptoes here, so that's why he's quite tall. Uh, Zuko's more stretched out, kind of in a wide stance. That's why the Aang comes across as being much taller. It's just because of the, the pose that they've gone for here. But you can tell, like, you know, it's, it's really accurate versions of uh, both characters um, from late in the series uh, using their kind of home element. And again, you can see the... Uh, Air, air base, the fire base here, and the way they do the effect. So Zuko, they had sort of a pillar of flame behind him. Uh, Aang, they have the kind of swirls coming up around the base. Just really, really nice looking overall. And then the uh, second statue to come out was, of course, the Katara. So let me just bring this one in here. A lot of stuff going on here. Um, so here is Katara, who you just about be able to see on screen there so you can see they look really really cool uh, just having them all here together um, should I bring the camera up just a little bit there we go and um, so yeah very very nice collection here and um, and I hope they do the rest of Team Avatar I hope for sure that the next figure is Toph would make sense because you have fire, air, water, earth is the one that you need next. Uh, so that would make the most sense to do. And Toph is the obvious character do, to do it with. And then you probably do need to do a Sokka. Now the question with Sokka is what did he do as his base? Because he's not a bender. Of course, I, I guess if they're doing book three to keep it consistent, it would probably have to be Sokka in his armor. So what do you do? Do you, do you have him in the really cool pose when he was like leading the invasion where he's like commanding from on top of Appa in the armor so you have a bit of a kind of partial bust of uh, Appa and Sokka's on it uh, on him that could be cool or even if it's just like a, a like Sokka on some sort of a landscape type thing and him just doing a pretty cool sword pose that works just as well and then beyond that, the question is like, okay, you've sort of more or less finished off Team Avatar. Will they do a Suki or not? Unsure, but I'd like to see them do it. If they were to go back to bending, I think the characters that you have left, the ones that make the most sense probably are um, Azula or Iroh. So another fire character probably does make the most sense because uh, Diamond Select, I don't think I've ever confirmed that they have the Korra license. So it's going to have to be an ATLA character. And in terms of benders, the obvious ones like Azula fits if they're going for the younger characters. Iroh, in terms of fan favorite, probably makes sense. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, there's options. But uh, I just think the, these figures look fantastic together. No one else so far has put out figures anywhere near the level of kind of details here with these ones, with the elemental effects. A lot of the times, like, they, they don't even show the characters doing any bending. Or if they do, it's just something kind of basic. Like I, I mentioned before, the, the McFarlane statue that's coming out is Avatar State Ang on an air scooter. Which is like, fair enough, but it's it's not the, the most exciting um, figure imaginable or anything like that. Um, the final thing I suppose to say is just um, with Toph, I'm actually very interested to see how they do earthbending. Because the thing you have with fire, air, and water is the idea that they're all sort of flowing to a degree. You can sculpt them in this way where air air and water, you know, they're both sort of fluids, I suppose. So they, they can have this really cool spiraling patterns. Even the flames can have a bit of a, you know, the, the curves and stuff like that of the different flames and the way the, the edges of the flames come off. 
looks really cool especially when you have sort of the the center of the flame be more red the outsides be um kind of more orangey yellow how do they do that for earth when you expect it to be a little bit more sort of like blocky in a way so the Toph statue depending on what they do could be very very interesting and um, they of course have to have Toph grounded to do most of her uh, moves to fit the character but that's fine you know having the character with her feet sculpted to the statue base is perfectly fine but then how do you what what do you do with regards to adding sort of height to the bending um like do you do earth wall um do you have like uh, a block of earth sort of attached or positioned close to her fist um there's some interesting things just because for a normal earth bender you probably have a lot of options to just do some standard earth bending but because top has a unique style it might be difficult to get that across uh, super effectively so um I hope they take their time on that to get it right because so far they've done an amazing job across these first three figures where um, the complaints that you would have about them is kind of like Aang's face is a little bit stern for the character. I wish it was just a little bit more of a like slight smile. Uh, Katara's face is good um, but not perfect. Zuko's pose is a little bit weird in terms of like what what movement what what bending move is he really doing there to cause this jet of fire behind him the fireball makes sense but what's he doing where he's like jumping this way but he's creating a fire behind him um it, it it's just a little bit like hmm just makes you question it a little bit but it looks really cool really the dynamic um so very minor complaints across these figures. Otherwise, like they're they're super impressive in person, especially seeing the three of them together here. Let's uh, change the positions a little bit here just to get some better looks. In terms of, I suppose, displaying them, it's kind of an interesting one in that the Ang is is like obviously quite tall, but it's not super wide. Whereas these two, the uh, Katara and Zuko, are actually you know quite wide. That probably, I think, actually is probably the, maybe the best formation for them. Um, just, hmm, should we switch this around, maybe? Yeah, the, maybe something like that uh, might be the, the kind of way to go with them. Um, just because these two are kind of wider. But, you know, very cool having the three of these. Um, the the diamond select line has definitely the the gallery line has definitely become probably my my most anticipated and my favorite thing this year and as someone who tends to always be like action figures first statues second these have really made me sort of change my mind and that when i did like the reviews for like a lot of the mcfarland figures i was left a little bit like these are nice but they're not they're not really, you know, blowing me away. Uh, the same with a lot of the Diamond Select action figures. But these, you know, nicely done, unique, dynamic sculpts are really doing it for me. So um, uh, something I didn't expect, I suppose, this year was to kind of uh, be kind of more into the statue releases than the action figure releases. So that's actually quite interesting. Um, but yeah, so I, I think this is definitely one of the things where, like, I... I feel like right now I kind of want to go completionist on this um, gallery diorama line um, and you know we'll see with the rest of the other stuff but in terms of what I like having in my collection these feel like the coolest ones definitely but uh, yeah we're focus here is of course on the Zuko figure again Ed the release was I think officially it was like two weeks ago when it officially came out uh, but of course, with delays, shipping delays, it's always a little bit like it's more of a release window than a specific date. So uh, definitely, it, it's it, the thing with these figures is usually you know get on it as soon as possible. They do have restocks, but with the way shipping is at the moment, uh, the restocks might be quite a while in coming. Uh, I did notice, like I think the Katara eventually got restocked after a while. Uh, the Ang certainly, I think, got a second batch um, this year, but. You know, if you maybe miss out on the initial wave of Zuko's, you could be waiting a while. So, if you find this somewhere and you like the look of it, I would definitely say grab it 
uh, sooner rather than later or you might miss out on this very very cool figure so yeah i think that's pretty much everything i want to say about it so in the comments uh, if you have any questions or thoughts on the figure definitely let me know in the comment section but otherwise that has been the video thanks for watching and bye